Hi everybody, this is Katie Carney from Katie's Stitching and this is my floss tube number 27 and it is July 18th uh, and it's been two weeks since I recorded uh, which is about the normal time in between my videos. Uh, I hope you're all well. We are having a very hot summer in Scranton uh, and I'm feeling every single degree of it. Uh, I've been hiding in the air conditioning as much as I can. Um, my electric bill, I can't even imagine what it's going to be, uh, but it is what it is. Um, so I was all set and ready next week to go back to the office. Um, you know, we're still in the COVID times. And I went up to, it's called the Stitchery Row. It's a LNS about uh, 70 minutes away from me. And I'm in the store and my phone just starts blowing up. The governor's speaking, the Department of Health is speaking, I've got like 10 text messages coming in. And I was like, well, this is a future Katie problem. So I leave and it turns out that we are not back in, so our, in Pennsylvania, we did a red, yellow, and green. Instead of numbered phases, we did colored, which I actually think was very smart because it's easier to follow. Uh, so we were in the green phase and we've gone backwards, but we're not quite in the yellow. We're like somewhere in this weird in-between place. Our restaurants are technically still allowed to serve inside, but only at 25% capacity. I have not been into a restaurant. I have eaten outside um, once, but... I, going into a restaurant holds no appeal. It actually, that it makes me very nervous and I don't think I would enjoy myself at all. I'll just continue doing takeout. Um, but the biggest message was if you can work from home, you should. So because I can, I decided I would continue to. So I, I told my boss um, and I actually, I called a board member uh, because I wanted to make sure that it's, it's weird because like you know you should be working from home. I'm doing the right thing. I'm staying home. I'm staying safe. I'm listening to the guidelines. But you also feel a little bit like you're doing something wrong, even though I'm, I know I'm not. It's just the weirdest thing. But anyway, I continue to work from home. Uh, luckily, I hadn't moved everything back into the office because that is going to be a challenge. I have so much stuff here. Um, but... That's a future Katie problem. So, um, my godson, Kyle, he turned five yesterday. My heart. So, he was born two and a half weeks after my open heart surgery. And after open heart, you have a, like, 10-pound weight limit of what you're allowed to lift until... Because they cut you from, like... Well, the top of my scar is here, and it goes down under my bra... Um, and they should cut higher, but because I was young, the doctor was like, so we're not going to give you an all the way up scar. And I just said, I mean, I'm willing to do whatever you want me to do, but that would be great. Uh, so when he was born, he was like seven-ish pounds and I was allowed to hold him. <laughs> so I would go up to his house and I could not hold his big sister who was big, um, but I could just sit there and hold him, um, and I fell in love with him, and we have been close ever since. So what I do for him and his sister is I get them their birthday cakes. Um, I figure they always want a cake, and that helps mom out a little bit. Uh, it's one less thing that she has to worry about. So I decided yesterday I have been back and forth about if I would go to his birthday party or not. I was never not going to buy the cake, of course. And I spent Thursday evening with him. His sister had to go get a haircut. So mom dropped him off and he spent the evening with my grandmother and I and had a wonderful time. But I made the very crappy, honestly, decision to not attend his birthday party because I didn't know how many people were going to be there. And I didn't want to like, I, it's just, it's hard, you know, we're still in a pandemic and it stinks. And I've never missed his birthday party before, and I've never not been there when his cake was cut. And, like, I'm 33. Like, the window... I'm gonna cry. I'm sorry. The window of me being able to have children is very quickly closing. 
And all I have is my fake nieces and nephews that call me Judgy Katie. And it just breaks my heart that I can't see them right now. And if people would just wear a stupid mask, maybe I would be able to see them again. Whew. Sorry. <clears throat> wow. I'm embarrassed, but I'm probably not going to start this over because I'll probably just do the same thing again. So let's talk about stitching, okay? We're five minutes and 25 seconds in, and hopefully I remember to put it in the show notes that I cried and that <laughs> I hate myself, that I cried and that now I'm going to start talking about cross stitch. <sighs> anyway. I have uh, two FF, well, two, one FO and one technically it's an FFO. Anyway, I have been, <laughs> it's so small, it shouldn't even count. I have been working on um, this Christmas kit. There we go. Forever, literally, <laughs> it feels like forever. It wouldn't end. And I finally finished it this week. Hang on. Plastic Ada, by the way, I don't 100% do not recommend. But he's very cute. I'm not doing any of the back stitching. I think he looks fine without it, and I hate back stitching. So that's either ornament five or six for 2020. So we're getting there. 14 more to go, but I've got a plan. I'm a woman who likes a plan. And then, do you remember a couple weeks ago I made that sweet little shirt with the bee and on it? Well, my friend Heather, her daughter, Violet, she's a Victorian of Violet, I'm pretty sure it's Violet, is turning two, and they're having a little bee-themed birthday party for her. So I got another pack of those um, peel and stick kits. And I made her a little t-shirt. Um, I'm going to give it a good iron this week. And I uh, have some Winnie the Pooh fabric. So I'm actually going to make her daughter's um, child size masks this week. Um, so then I will take that over to her. I'm glad it's done though. I was a little concerned that I wasn't going to finish it. Uh, so it's cute. I'm glad it's done. All right. What else have I been working on? Where is my... Hang on, I've lost a pattern. Hang on. Well, if I can find my mouse. Also, back to my earlier rant that you should wear a mask. I realized that just last week I was like, my grandmother shouldn't get yelled at for not wearing a mask when I almost burned the house down. I still stand by that. If you're going to go to the mall, wear a mask. Okay, so what have I been stitching other than those two things that I, those are like my webinar stitching, um, but my evening stitching is I'm still focusing on Pavane by Long Dog. I love this, um, although I've been, so I've, I decided to give this away, a friend of mine got married Two weeks ago, I think they finally got married. Not finally, they got married. Um, I only had like a week's notice, so if I would have known, I would have focused on this more. <clears throat> but it's getting there. I have finished four of the nine pages, and I'm about a third of the way done another page. Um, so we're cooking. I've discovered, so I've been doing... This border here is just two stitches all the way around and I like doing that in hand and I will often do that like if I'm gonna watch a movie with my grandmother or if I'm gonna be in the car I will stitch on that I don't know why I'm saying if I'm gonna be in the car I'm never in the car I don't go anywhere but anyway it's good for stitching in hand doesn't require a hoop to do that so it's coming along slowly but surely. I think, so the end of the page is probably here. So I have a ways to go. It's pretty though. I do like it. Um, last night, 
So I, I told myself if I finished that middle page that I'm working on that I could pick up Lady of the Flag for two weeks, but last night I was kind of depressed, so I picked Lady of the Flag up, and I'm going to focus on that for the weekend, because I guess I deserve it. I don't really, but in my head I do. Um, and this is, of course, in my Rika bag Hyde Park fabric. I have been looking for this. I found it. You know, you put something away and then you lose it. Not good. That's a very expensive thing to lose. And then last night when I was feeling all kind of ways, I picked up Lady of the Flag. You've all seen her. We've all loved her. Here she is. Mirabilia. Lady of the Flag. And so what I'm doing, I'm going to flash a little bit of the pattern, but it's like something absurd, like 23 photocopied pages long or something. So if you can figure out the pattern from this, more power to you. What I have been doing on my photocopies is I've been just crossing out each section as I do it. So I'm trying to do like obviously finishing a thread if I can but like making sure I finish blocks and then I'm crossing the block off so I know it's done. So I started this in the middle. It is on my uh, 10 inch hoop because I am planning to work on it tonight. <coughs> Hang on. Sorry, that was rude. But here she is, and look at that. Look at that red. Oh, I love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. So I got all of this red in, this color brown, and then this section here done. It's a lot of counting, and then I'm being so particularly careful, and then I never mark off my patterns, so that's taking time. So she's not the fastest thing I've ever worked on, but I am really, really enjoying her a lot. <laughs> I really, I love her. So I'm going to work on her um, while this is uploading, probably. And then a little bit of haul. I went to Home Goods last weekend on Saturday. My best friend and I did all of our, like, errands that we had put off. We went to... I went to the farmer's market, but I do that every week. And I went to Walmart for groceries, but I do that every week. But like we went to Home Goods, Hobby Lobby, Joann's, because I had $15 in Joann bucks or whatever, the reward, smile, whatever things to spend. And did we go anywhere else? Target. So like, that, that for us, that's all in the same shopping center. But we just went. And we did them all, and now I don't have to go back to any of them because I do think we are going to go back into a lockdown. So um, much like right before we went into the lockdown last time I got all my errands done, I did that again last weekend. But anyway, I have been wanting a box big enough to hold my um, Rika bags because they're big. So this fits all of my project bag, my Rika bag. So it's got Pavins in here, my Christmas, my poor neglected Christmas village that I don't know if I'm ever going to go back to, then all of my Christmas ornaments, and then like Mary Mary that's ready to go, and then this is the Frog Warts project and my Made by Michelle McGraw bag that she made me that I love so much. And I got some accoutrement for it. So I guess that kind of starts me on my haul. Um, ooh, so uh, thank you to everyone who said to get Best Press uh, for my cross stitch fabric ironing. I haven't tried it for that yet, but I... My friend who's having the baby who I'm making the quilt for, um, 
Her due date is in less than a month, and she went with her first one several weeks early, so I need to get my button gear. So I used this. This is um, Mary Ellen's Best Press today to iron the backing fabric for the quilt, and primo, love it. It was really, really, really helpful. So um, I got it on Amazon because Hobby Lobby, that's actually why we went to Hobby Lobby on our great errands last week, and they were out. But that's okay. Um, and then I got this from Amazon and it was supposed to have one of these. <laughs> and it didn't. <laughs> I opened the box and I was like, are you joking? The picture has this, but luckily I had one. Um, so that was really helpful. I have decided though, <laughs> speaking of quilting, that... Going forward, I'm probably going to have to send quilts out. So I live in a very old house. It's 100, I've told you, it's 130 years old. And it used to be two apartments. So we have a lot of rooms, but they are small. And they are full of furniture. And, like, there's no closets. So I just rearranged the room I'm in um, completely. It's the first time I rearranged in 12 years because um, I've lived here I moved out for a year but I've been in and out and it's completely different I had um, the weird anxiety last week again I because I think we're going into lockdown again I had weird anxiety last week and then I rearranged everything and then I had an anxiety attack about the fact that I rearranged everything and it was not good but anyway I gave up, to make the room more functional, I gave up a lot of the room that I had in the middle of the floor. And I don't have a surface big enough to lay out a quilt. So this morning, I moved as much furniture as I could to lay out the twin size quilt that I'm currently working on. And I really did not have enough space. And I'm worried that because of that, the backing is never going to be perfectly flat. I did the best I could. I ironed it the best I could. I have, so I used um, safety pins and I clipped the three layers together and tomorrow I'm actually gonna quilt. Um, and binding is a next week problem. But I am, I don't know. I think next time I'm gonna have to, I just, I don't have the room. I really don't. I mean, I think that a very simple quilting I'm perfectly capable of doing, but I don't have the room to set up to get to where I can quilt. So if anybody has any ideas of how to make it use less space, that would be great. Um, all that to say, I know that all of you watch Stitching with the Sisterlies because don't we all watch them? They're amazing. And I want them to adopt me uh, badly. Uh, I love Colleen and I message her on Instagram and <laughs> I have decided we're friends. Uh, she doesn't maybe know it yet, but that's fine. I'm like a little fangirl. It's fine. But anyway, she posted this book, The Lincoln Museum Quilt. And off I trotted to Amazon because they have everything. Because she posted a picture of the book and then she did the quilt. And it's just, it's beautiful. And I was like, that looks simple enough that maybe, maybe I could do it. Um, so, make your own Lincoln quilt. Woven cotton stitched together in a scrappy way are the stars in this early 19th century reproduction quilt created especially for the cabin exhibit at the Abraham Lincoln Museum in Springfield, Illinois. Inside, you'll find the history about quilts on the frontier and instructions to create your own version. So, it's all here for me, and she did say she'd help. So, I am going, this is going to be number two for quilting. And I needed fabric, and Allison from It's Charm School, who, hi Allison if you're watching, she has been doing a huge D stash, um, and I will try to remember to link that below because she just posted a bunch more stuff. Um, so I was like, I had already gotten some stuff in her D stash, 
Um, so she did like these bags of just scraps and they were like $5 and I got a couple. And she did, what else did I get? And then like just like fabrics. Um, because I don't have any fabric, so I figured, what the heck, that's a, a very affordable way to start a very nice collection. And um, turns out, uh, as we've been, like, messaging during her de-stash, that she follows me here. Uh, and we got to talking, and I figured out that she has fantastic needle minders. And so we're talking on a Friday, and I've just gotten this book in, and I was, we're messaging, and I was like, man... I let all, and her sale was over at that point. I was like, I let all those Civil War reproduction fabrics go. And she's like, oh, did you? Go look at lot, blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. Civil War reproduction fabric for an incredibly affordable price because I can't afford Civil War reproduction fabric. And like... French Quarter by Paula Barnes. These are all just words to me, but I mean, you've got to have like red. This is Paul Bonds for Bonnie Blue Quilts. This is Marcus Fabrics. Like they're just, they're so pretty. And like my, fa and like even just a little bit of that, like black cotton, fabulous, I'm so happy. And then she's like, well, while you're at it, you're also going to need some neutrals. <laughs> Allison, you're killing me, girl. I think, and then she just posted a new sale and she had some more Civil War stuff and I, I claimed it. It's fine. It won't go bad. Um, so Colleen is going to help me make this quilt and thank you Colleen uh, I'm very excited and then while I was ordering I was like well you know since you are already going to be sending me a package can I buy some stitch markers guys her little packages for the stitch markers she makes these little envelopes I'm assuming she makes them. Look at how cute that is. I'm keeping it forever. Actually, you could probably put a gift card in here really easily. Like, so cute. And then I got a couple stitch markers. Let's see if I have a good way to... She does Harry Potter stitch markers, which I think there's a severe lack of. Um, so... I got the Gryffindor robe, and then this is a library book, and it says Hogwarts Library. Oh, honestly, don't you read, which is a, a quote from one of the books. So, I'm so excited. Thank you, Allison. And I'm so glad that your D-stash has um, gotten us talking some more. It's been really, really fun to chat with you. <laughs> okay. I'm not done with the haul yet. There's a lot. Whew, it's hot in here though. So I think, I, I don't think these had come in yet, but I got all of the Lavender and Lace Celtic Ladies. I ordered them at a discount on eBay. I decided after watching Pumpkin Hollow Quilts that I wanted to do the autumn one and then I just decided to get them all. So here's the autumn one. She's stunning. And I am doing a color conversion on her clothes to more, I consider these purples that are here more winter personally. So I'm doing a fall color conversion. And then I got the fabric actually this week for her. This is a 32 count Belfast and it's taupe. So I got that at the shop. And then the other ones, I'm sure you've seen them, but this is a Christmas one. I love the red dress. I can't wait to do that. Um, summer. 
She's very pretty. She's got like purple and greens. And then winter. And I think, I could be wrong, I think she's black. Um, otherwise, she's just got weird shadowing on her face. She's got fantastic hair. And then um, this gorgeous, like, white with gold dress. I'm here, winter. I, can, I think winter might be the second one I do. And then spring, she's a blonde with pretty, pretty purples. So that's the Celtic ladies. And I can't wait to stitch all of them. Autumn, I'll start right when I'm done, Lady of the Flag. And then while I was at the shop, I specifically went for fabric. Um, and Lord, did I get, I spent a lot of money on fabric. So for Made by Michelle McGraw and I are going to Sal, His Eyes on the Sparrow. Uh, you've all seen it. It's gigantuous. Um, so we're going to sell that. And she did not have the called for... She didn't have a big enough pick, pick piece of doubloon. And then I also wanted it in 32 count, not 28. So I got... Um, it's called Milk Chocolate. And it's a 32 count. I think it'll be okay. It's cute though. And then for Pandemic by Long Dog, I didn't have anything near big enough for this. Like nothing even close. Because uh, this is, it's like a, th it's a 23 page pattern. It's huge. This is Pandemic by Long Dog. They gave this out for free for two weeks. I feel really bad for people who didn't get it for free. But also, their patterns are worth every penny. Pavane is beautiful, so just buy it. But I found it is Winter Wishes. It's a 32 count, and it's like a gray. But there's just every once in a while a little spot of purple. So I'm using DMC 154 for this. And it just sings on this fabric. But like, these are half yard pieces of hand dyed fabric. They cost a fortune. <laughs> it's fine, everything's fine. Um, I think I'm gonna have to become someone who has more than two projects going at a time though, cause I wanna stitch all these things. So while I was there, I also got, for my friend Tara, her birthday's in August. This won't be done for August. Maybe it'll be more of a Christmas present, but I finally picked up Plum Street's Tired Trio because she loves sloths. So I got that for my friend Tara, and I bought two skeins of... Um, the Black Coffee because I'm pretty sure that it looked like the black coffee was the tree. Um, and if it is, I figured I'd want that to be in the hand dyed. And then I'm still not done. I, I bought my first uh, Blackbird. I got the uh, Sweet Land of Liberty. I love this. So I was really excited to find it and to get it. Um, it's the These are, I figure these are patterns that are just not going to go out of style ever. So, I mean, look at that. Little house. Oh, I love it. Love, love, love. I like patriotic things. And then the only other thing I got, I got this actually for a friend, but she told me that she probably would never use it, so I guess I'm going to keep it. Um, and it is sew a needle pulling thread. Sew a needle pulling thread. La oh, wait. That will bring... Uh, why can't I remember the words? 
so do fa la mi so re oh well it doesn't matter it's from the sound of music <laughs> Um, and it's just a kit. It's got the little bag that you stitch on and all the finish. It's all done for you. And this is Shepherd Bush, um, Shepherd's Bush. So I splurged on this, but I, anything with the sound of music is for me. So I also got that. And that was it. Um, it was plenty. I spent a lot of money. <laughs> she was bringing me out and she's like, this fabric is a lot. And I was like, okay, well, you already cut it. So I think I'm committed. <laughs> fine. I can't, I'm not allowed to buy anything else though. Uh, Allison, I might have already claimed something, so I guess I can't even tell you I'm not allowed to shop with you anymore. Um, so at Hobby Lobby, I got this for myself. I was actually going to, I want to try to embroider and I figured I'd hang it in my office, but now I'm not going back. So I guess I'll just hang it here on my future cross stitch wall uh, but it was very cute and then my godson his older sister uh, who I, I'm very close with both of them and they take turns of who Chuch is gonna take and I'm taking Cassie the sister tomorrow she's six um, so we'll pick up Happy Meals at McDonald's and eat them with my grandmother and then I'm gonna teach her how to sew. Uh, it's it's going to be fine, I hope. <laughs> I figure um, it's just a felt applique kit, so it should be pretty easy, um, and we'll sit together to do it. And I figure, you know, whatever she doesn't get done or do, I'll just do after she leaves, and then she can have it. Um, but uh, when I was her age, you know, my mom and my grandma and even my grandmother here, they always had crafts for me to do and I loved it. And I, I really do think that that's what gave me the love of crafting that I have now. So if I can give her just a little bit of that, then I feel like I'm doing my job as a touch. Um, so we'll see. Hopefully she has fun. Um, the last time, I haven't taken her in a long time. We went to the movies the last time, and we ate a lot of popcorn. And then afterwards, she's like, can we go for lunch? And I was like, oh, I'm not hungry. But of course we can, sweetie. Um, but I'm really mean because she, she's so, it's mean. She's so gross, though. She, like, dips. But she, like, mixes things in when she dips her chicken nuggets, and it's, I can't, I've, she's never gotten over the weird, like, science concoctions on her plate, and, oh, bless her heart. She's so cute. Um, and then I also, my block of the month from, uh, Missouri Star Quilt Company came. So this is month three. I haven't even done month one or month two because I'm too scared to do it. Um, but hopefully I will get over my fear. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, so that's all of my haul. But now it's time to talk very briefly about my plans. My plans are to work on Lady of the Flag this weekend. Monday I'll pick Pavane back up and work on her until Friday, and then it's 24 hours of cross-stitch next weekend, and I don't have a life, so I'm going to participate, and I'm going to do, um, like, Jolly July or Jingle July or whatever it's called, and I'm going to focus on, um, for the 24 hours, Christmas ornaments. Um, I am currently working on, this is so embarrassing, I'm currently working on... <laughs> Um, this Snowbells Mill Hill kit, figuring that one, it's good practice for beading for Lady of the Flag, and also they're cute, and it was a gifted to me kit, which is even better. Um, so that's my current ornament, and I'll just continue working on ornaments over the weekend. And then I would love to knock out like three or four ornaments next weekend in the 24 hours. So then I only have 10 left. Um, I like to have all the ornaments done by October 1st so that I can finish them during the month of October. And then when November rolls around, they're done. Um, I'll be honest, I'm, I'm, 
I, if you guys have been watching for any length of time, you know how much I love Christmas and hosting and the taco party and everybody being here. And I actually already have my Christmas dress for this year. So, you know, fingers crossed that I'm able to safely have 14 people around my table at Christmas. Um, fingers crossed. I mean, it's just, it's, it's a crazy, crazy world that we're living in right now. <laughs> It's just, it's sad. Anyway, um, I've gone on for 35 minutes. I've cried. I've kind of sung. I have showed you a lot of haul <laughs> for not a lot of stitching. I hope that you guys are all well and safe and know how grateful I am to spend some time of you, some of your floss tube time with you. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for your Instagram messages. Thank you for... Uh, being here and I hope you stay well and safe and I will talk to you all soon.